The heritage of a football club is defined not only by events on the pitch, but also by the people and communities that support it. In exploring these communities, this short film takes a closer look at the relationship between disability and football at Exeter City. We've talked to some of the people who have been involved in facilitating improved access to the game both on and off the pitch. According to the Football Association, in England there are 9.4 million people with a long-term disability, illness or condition. This equates to almost one in five of the population. At Exeter City, the Community Trust works to support people of all abilities to participate in a range of activities related to football. We spoke to Will Allen about his role within the Trust and its work in the local community. Um, I'm Will Allen, I'm the Disability Inclusion Officer at Exeter City Community Trust. Uh, the Community Trust is um, Exeter's leading health and wellbeing charity. Um, and my role within the Trust is to oversee the disability sessions um, and inclusive open sessions. All the disability sessions and inclusion sessions, the emphasis on inclusion, making sessions that are accessible to all as far as possible. Um, the benefits of being involved with um, of doing physical activity, so the physical benefits, mental benefits, health and well-being. Um, the, the social side of things, that's really what we look to, to focus on and get a good structure in place initially. And then the, the competitive element that takes care of itself when people get involved. Yeah, we look to give people equal game time, equal opportunities, um, set up sessions and um, teams to meet people's needs. Depending on their impairment, they can, they can get involved and play. So if they're a wheelchair user, they have a power chair and a, an oversized ball and they can play football, but essentially it's the same as, as anyone playing football. Just the, the rules are slightly different, the conditions, equipment are different. So a uh, power chair team, they do a two hour training session twice a month where we'll yeah, work on technical skills, game based practices, as well as um, just doing some game situations as well. It's got a real wow factor watching the players play those kind of games and the skill involved. It's you know, it's really impressive. Someone gets in a chair, you see someone for the first time who'd maybe come from a manual chair, and they get into a power chair and they've got that speed and be able to manoeuvre and um, cover the distance with the game. It opens up a lot of um, possibilities that maybe they hadn't known about before in terms of playing and the competition element as well. It's seriously competitive um, games when they get out there. Um, which is great to see. It's hugely impressive, particularly when you have a go in a chair yourself and realise how difficult it is to control and strike the ball, dribble. So it's having an appreciation of of the the skill they require to control their chair, the timing, the movement within a game. It's just really impressive to watch. To to play ability counts football, um, you need to qualify to play. You need to be a player with a with a disability. Um, so it's pan disability, mixed disability teams. You know, being a visually impaired person on a fully sighted team, as I have done in the past, you feel a bit like the weak link. You know, you're the odd man out because you're the only disabled person. And obviously, working with other disabled people, you feel that, you know, you're not the weak link, you're part of a, a team. So, you know, you can, you know, I enjoy that more, I feel more satisfying. I'm not coming here thinking, how am I going to let my team down this week? I think, how am I going to help my team? You know, like, if you get new friends and you get, like, experience of how to play and what it's like to be, like, in a good team. Um, and you play against different people, what's up your level, and it's a challenge for all of us. Quite a few years back, I was watching the Paralympics on TV. I was watching disability football and having a bad leg and not being able to play mainstream football. Um, it was hard because I've always loved football. I was a black belt when I was 12 years old. I was always into sport, like it was my life. And academically on paper, I, w I wasn't ever very clever. I was dyslexic and struggled. So when I had my accident when I was 16, I just had years of, of operations and going back to the hospital and doctors and still now my health's a massive struggle in my life. And football directed me in a way where I could 
have some focus on that and I contacted Exeter City um, asking if they had any setup that I could get involved and that's where it all started from there. Each year the Community Trust engages with more than 45,000 people in delivering physical activities, education, health and wellbeing programmes. One group of young people involved in these programmes is the Ability Counts Premier Team who in the spring of 2017 took part in and won the FA People's Cup. Yeah, so the, so the day as a whole was you know, it's exciting going up to, to Birmingham, see, you know, seeing all these, these teams from all over the country and the national finals on the day was a real roller coaster ride. We had mixed results in the group, then getting into semi final was kind of unexpected, it almost took the pressure off. And again, into the final, we perhaps sort of exceeded expectations by getting that far at that point. And they were on such a roll that everyone just came together as a team. And it's, it's kind of described that moment, everything just fitted together and went well and, you know, everyone was moving and, you know, the shape was good, the, the tactics were good, everything, everything just came together and, yeah, they, they're convincing, we were convincing winners in the final 1-4-1 one, one in the end and played extremely well. Um, all seven members of the squad and the coaching team, it's a yeah, fantastic experience. I'd just like to thank everyone who's involved with disability football in general because it's like ladies football, it's, it's growing and, and the more people that get involved and aware about it, it's great. So thanks to everyone for helping boost disability football because we're no different to anyone else. While the People's Cup represented a huge success for the club on the pitch, it is also off it that people work together to make a difference. In 2007, the Exeter City Disabled Supporters Association was formed with the aims of promoting activities and schemes for the benefit of the club and its disabled supporters. We spoke with the group's founding chairman, Nick Saunders, about how the association began and their role in promoting the inclusiveness of disabled supporters. It was quite funny how it all started really, because um, in 2002, I was at, uh, at, a, at a game in the new, the new big bank stand, and I was in the disabled area or the accessible area at the top, which is now area five. And because I was able to walk at that time, I, I used to just go into area five if there was no one in there, just to stand there and lean against the wall or something, just to make sure I, you know, could, you know, keep my balance really, because I couldn't obviously go down steps or anything like that. And um, a few stewards came up to me and said. Sorry, we've been instructed by our security officer, or sorry, um, stadium safety officer, to remove you from this area. And I said, why? And he says, because you're not disabled and you're not registered with the football club. And I said, I've got a disability. I can't walk down steps. I can't sit down in a normal seat because I can't get back up again. So that went on all the way through the match. I was with a friend as well at that time. They got removed from the area, but I stood my ground and said, no, I'm not moving because, you know, just because you can't see that I'm disabled. But once I started walking, obviously you could tell that, you know, I had a disability. And it was just after that game, I was instructed by one of the friendly stewards that did actually come up to apologise afterwards and um, went to see the club. And it all started from there, really. And, you know, with the support of the supporters club, I got involved with the football club itself and that you know transpired into you know becoming a disability liaison officer because that's what the term was at that time so and I've been doing that ever since you know getting the backing from the then operations manager which was operations director at the time Francis Farley you know I just went to her with the idea of you know a, um, a group of voices together instead of one individual would have a better say of what happens at the football club and she agreed so I went about to set that up you know we had our first meeting and um, everybody at that meeting got elected onto the committee and that's when you know you know it really started off and since then you know we've had committee members providing chairs for assistance to sit in in the disabled base you know, to make sure that, you know, they're down at the same lo level as the person they're with. Just the whole lot, really, and just, you know, being able to set up, like, the Southwest Disabled Fans experience for them as well, 
which encourages clubs to work together on the same goal and which is improving facilities and customer services for disabled supporters. Another aspect of inclusion at Exeter City is demonstrated by the Soccer Sight Scheme, which provides audio commentary for fans with visual impairments. So Soccer Sight is live match commentary for visually impaired football fans, so we provide commentary from the ground for other fans who are also at the ground. Um, it differs from radio commentary in that I think we're much more descriptive about where the ball is and much more descriptive about what's happening, so you have less of the kind of chat that you get in a radio, the kind of stuff which is very pretty, but doesn't really talk about the game. We're kind of for 90 minutes constantly talking about the game, describing what's happening, where it's happening. So I think about 10 or so years ago, the RNIB Start an Initiative uh, gave 92 Premier League and Football League clubs um, kits to start it off. And some clubs have dropped it, some are still doing it. I'm not sure quite how many, how many are doing it, but Exeter have done it consistently for 10, 11 years now. So essentially you are being their eyes for them. You're telling them what's going on, describing the game for them and you know, allowing them to, to be part of the, the same football experience that everyone else can have really. Yeah, it makes live football much, much more accessible, really, to, to people. And I think that's a key thing, because I think the experience of a live match is not something that you can get on the TV. I think watching a game on TV is very, very different to watching a game live. And I think this commentary kind of makes, makes a live match more accessible um, for visually impaired fans. The association has also had an influence on the redevelopment of the grandstand and away end at St James Park showing the inclusive nature of decision-making in football that has not always been a part of the game's culture. We set up a redevelopment committee, you know, a few individuals that might, may know a bit about, you know, disabled facilities, and there was about three or four of us sat together saying, this is what we would like to see at the football club, not just based on people in wheelchairs, but accessible seating, which the club lacks at the moment, you know, because at the moment someone with who needed a wider seat or something that's classed as accessible seating, and the club hadn't got that at the moment. But hopefully, through our endeavour, through the association and our little committee there, that we've changed the club's perspective on certain aspects of the redevelopment, and I think the club are listening definitely. More and more things and developing so and coming into the club. And when and we've gone to the club with help, they've been absolutely well, fabulous. We've well, been well, able to sort of, with nego negotiations about well, how we do it, not will we do it, how, how we do it, um, the club has been really good. One of the founding members of the association is Grecian Greg Hill, who was named the Football League Supporter of the Year in 2015. Described in his nomination for the award as a credit to the club, and football in general, Greg is a well-known face among Exeter City fans due to his work selling programmes on a match day. I remember coming in uh, that far in there <laughs> when, when, it, when, when, it, when it was there. Coming in the other way because my mum my mom never, never knew she hated football. So she thought she might run me the wrong one one day. She was like me. So we could get in that way in there, not knowing what on earth we were doing. And it was so helpful that, um, that I, 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 wanted, I, wanted, I wanted to come back. And I would say, um, I remember, I remember bringing a little group of friends along with me and I was the only one that was, had my eyes fixed on that picture for the whole match. All the other kids wanted to go, wanted to keep, keep getting up going to the toilet and Everything else. Um, so that was kind of my first, my first ever experience of the Hello Tub. And, uh, and I always make sure that everyone else is made really welcome. Because, just like I sell programs, 
I've done that for many years now. Um, so I, I've kind of taken on that ambassador. I know there's other ambassadors around the club, um, that do the similar jobs to what I, to what I do. But I, the people ask me for directions, and I'm more than happy to help help them. It was because I was like. Um, made to feel so welcome, and I want, want and I want, wanted to help in in a way. So I remember asking Andy Gillard, um, a well, well, well known face around these parts, um, whether there's anything I could do, and. People, people didn't know. People, people, I felt that people were, people were scared of giving me that, giving me that responsibility, if you like, because um, they didn't know how to react to me. But I remember, I remember going to fans forum one day and. <laughs> Introducing myself to the um, to, to, to someone in the back office there, and I remember I remember, I remember shaking their hand and, and making myself making them feel comfortable with me. So I think that was that that was what made them feel comfortable comfortable with me. What 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 I enjoy most about it is going down to the um to the bottom of the boat there, putting out my flag, having a having a drink in the in the bar there, and just soaking up soaking 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 up the other atmosphere and. I met so many people through that. It's it's been a great avenue for people to people to um get to know, get to know me. And I was uh, and I always remember 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 um, someone coming up to me and saying. We didn't normally go and come up to people like you. We, uh, not in a nasty way, just in a friendly way because they they didn't know how to deal with people in the in waters or people that look look, look differently or time to differently. And and I met and I met so many people through that it. It's amazing. Everyone at Exeter City Football Club is very proud to work with people of all abilities. Paul Farley, a club director with leader responsibility for equality and inclusion, shared his thoughts. For football clubs, for this club, it's important to be inclusive. Yeah, It's important to try and get as many people to watch the game as possible. The attitude has changed. It's changed towards the disabled supporters. They're included. They're in a group that go straight through to board level. The Community Trust can do so many good things. The charitable arm, if you like, of Exeter City Football Club. Why wouldn't you want as many people coming to the ground as possible? Why wouldn't you want as many fans supporting Exeter City? Why wouldn't you give people an opportunity to come and watch a game? Why wouldn't you give people an opportunity to come and work at the club? Why should you be exclusive and only want certain types of people or certain groups of people? We're all Grecians, I guess is the phrase, and we're all in this together you know the one thing we have in common <laughs> we have one thing in common yeah we're fans of this football club it, should that matter if you're a fan should anything else matter absolutely not